Nelson's relationship with his estranged father has been one of the core building blocks of his character for the past 20 years. His dad went out to buy cigarettes and didn't come back. Since then, he will sporadically and temporarily return to his son's life, or else the series will pair up Nelson with a brand new fatherly figure. And yet, Nelson's dad himself remains mysterious, with details constantly changing. For today's Simpsons Mysteries, we're going to look at the many dads of Nelson Muntz. Who are they? What are their relationships with Nelson? And most importantly, is this actually going somewhere? First, let's talk about Mr. Muntz and how the series has portrayed this guy over the years. Let's call this a mini Simpsons Histories, if you will. Nelson's dad first appeared at the beginning of Season 4's Brother from the Same Planet as a soccer coach, who awards him a free trip to Pele's soccer and acting camp. We see him again in Season 6's Bart's Girlfriend, rounding up Nelson on Sunday morning alongside the other parents. In Season 8, we get our first sign of trouble. Nelson tells Lisa she's the first person who came over since his dad went nuts. However, in Season 9, now he's back again on his motorcycle, ready to celebrate by taking him to Hooters. But then, in Trials of Horror 11, a couple years later, Nelson states that his dad is in jail. It's clear that early on, the writers were playing fast and loose with the specifics of Nelson's home life. They are beginning to indicate that things aren't great, but are still working out the details. Season 14's The Bard of War seems to be where they found a backstory they liked. Nelson's dad said that he was going to the store and instead abandoned them. For the first time, we get a sense of how Nelson copes, how he sees his father everywhere and tearfully calls out to him, much to Marge's annoyance. I can see why he left. The Christmas episode in season 15 elaborates further, where his mom says that his dad stole her gold tooth the night that he left. Nelson, in denial, insists that he went to the store and he will wave the Pop-Tarts in her face when he returns. In a flash-forward episode, Nelson runs out on his kids with Sherry and Terry in the same way as his own dad. In season 16's Sleeping with the Enemy, we seemingly get an ending to this mini-saga. Nelson tells Marge that his dad went out for cigarettes and never returned, and after his mom ditches him too, he moves in with the Simpsons. He tearfully sings Papa Can You Hear Me at the window. In the end, Bart somehow finds Nelson's dad. It turns out he did go to the store for smokes, but after an allergic reaction, got trapped in an unscrupulous circus. Nelson's mom returns from Hollywood, and the Munces are officially back together. Hooray, they did it! We can close the book on this sad chapter in Nelson's life. As we all know with the Simpsons continuity, things are not that simple. This was not one of those event episodes like Grade School Confidential or Lisa the Vegetarian that changed the status quo. Nelson's dad immediately disappeared again. We would hear about him on occasion, like the beer cans who leave in the bathtub. Sometimes we'd see them in the background together. In season 28, we get the return of Nelson's sports dad, where he goes on TV to defend kids' sports, getting all up in Kent Brockman and Professor Frank's faces. This is easily his most aggro appearance, yelling at Nelson to show off his moves and making him run laps. Otherwise, they would stick to the premise of Nelson's dad being completely out of his life. In one episode, he was a bank robber. In another, he was working as the narrator of the documentary that we're watching, and in the end, returns briefly to his son. The key word here is briefly. In season 28, he returns to gawk at the new hot elementary school teacher. He confuses Nelson with another son named Norman that he also abandoned. If he doesn't return on his own, they'll drag him home from Canada. He gives Nelson the good news that he has yet another brother in Fort McMurray. It's pretty clear that Nelson's dad is laying pipe everywhere and doesn't care what happens afterward. In another flash forward, Hubert Wong mocks Nelson for his dad's secret family in Shelbyville. This story had been going on for so long that it reached the point where Nelson literally traveled to Mars to find his dad. Earlier in that story, Nelson confesses that after his dad's Afghanistan work, he was on a secret mission to Mars. The other kids politely humor their friend in denial. But Nelson was right, he did go to Mars. Unfortunately, upon being tracked down, 
Nelson's dad tells him to wait a sec while he gets some space cigarettes, and, well, there he goes. They've definitely hit the logical extreme of this joke now, huh? When it comes down to it, Nelson's dad falls in the flexible reality territory of The Simpsons, at least where the writers are concerned. They don't even commit to a consistent character design for this guy. It's clear from the middle seasons, the writers settled on this cigarettes backstory as a running gag and a source of drama. If adjusting the details will make a joke funnier or a story beat hit harder, they're gonna do it. The end result is a character with an extra story hook, an emotional need to fulfill. And, luckily for Nelson, Springfield seems to be full of potential father figures. By my count, there are four characters in Springfield that has acted in this capacity in a significant manner. Let's take a look at what happened with each and figure out who was the best mentor for Nelson. Were any of these stories worth following up on? And I think it's only fair that we start with the oldest of Nelson's dads. Oh man, Nelson and Mr. Burns. These two would rule every age group of Springfield with an iron fist. So in season 22's The Full Monty, Mr. Burns becomes an idiotic shell of his former self and everyone in Springfield gets two hours to do whatever they want with him. Nelson decides to make Mr. Burns his temporary dad, enthusiastically introducing him to the gang before Jimbo whisks him away. At the conclusion, Mr. Burns goes back to normal. However, Nelson catches up to him and says that he was his father for two hours and isn't letting him get away. He demands Burns watches him in the school play, literally threatening to crash their helicopter until Burns agrees. Talk about abandonment issues. To Mr. Burns' credit, he does attend Nelson's play, proudly declaring, that's my boy. This is easily among the most minor of these examples, but I will say that Mr. Burns and Nelson do actually play off of each other well. They are both harsh, strong-willed personalities, and Mr. Burns does admire people with a certain amount of spunk. Heck, he originally put Nelson on his callback sheet all the way back in season five. If the writers decided, hey, we're gonna have Mr. Burns adopt Nelson, it would certainly create some interesting storylines, especially with Smithers there to help out. Long term, I think Nelson and Mr. Burns would either get along smashingly or murder each other within a week. The problem with this concept is that the pairing is incredibly gimmicky. If the writers went in this direction, you would suddenly transform Nelson into the richest kid in town. Like, do you remember that show Doug from the 90s? When it moved to Disney, they turned the bully Rogers family from living in a trailer to being fabulously wealthy. And did anybody really like that change? I don't think Nelson would be as fun of a bully if they had Mr. Burns backing him. So as chaotic as Nelson and Burns are together, the most we could probably get out of them is a one-off spotlight episode, if that. Let's instead move on to someone who Nelson knows considerably better. All right, now we gotta talk about the man himself, Homer Simpson. In season 31's Better Off Ned, Homer finds Nelson alone in the dump, crying about his missing dad and his mom being a drunk. Does Homer help out Nelson out of a deep sense of sympathy? Of course not. He's mad at Bart for bonding with Flanders and decides to mentor Nelson to make Bart feel bad. Homer teaches Nelson how to make motorcycle noises, how to play darts and billiards, and gives advice for when the wife kicks you out of the house. Nelson is somewhat wary of Homer at first, asking if he's sleeping with his mom, but when Homer denies it, Nelson excitedly hugs him, saying he's the first person to ever say that. From Nelson's point of view, Homer's the first father figure who truly wants to help him. Nelson's mom, who for once has a surprisingly good read on the situation, knows what Homer's up to and says he's gonna leave Nelson like all the rest. She pushes Homer to tell the poor kid the truth. Immediately from Homer's we need to talk, Nelson senses Homer is about to run out on him and goes on the defensive. When Homer admits the truth to him, Nelson runs off to punish Bart, the son that Homer actually loves. Jeez, it's like when writing this thing, they looked at the Peppy episode and wondered, how can we make this infinitely more messed up? Maybe jerkass Homer isn't dead after all. I'm still glad they did this episode because after the Nelson Marge spotlight, I'd always kind of wondered whether these two would get along. We've done most of the other Simpson family combinations with Nelson. 
And, somewhat surprisingly, these two don't seem to have great chemistry. It could just be the writing of this episode, bland dialogue and whatnot, but fundamentally, I don't think they're very good character foils for each other. Like, they're both great at being an authority figure or co-conspirator to Bart, they're both able to take Lisa out of her comfort zone, relating to someone different from herself, but when you get Homer and Nelson together, their character goals don't line up. Homer's barely keeping it together with his own kids, and doesn't have any more supportive bandwidth he could give to Nelson. Plus, what are they gonna do? Have Nelson move into the Simpson household? Come on. Better Off Ned was a story worth trying, but it's clear that home son just isn't a thing. Thankfully, this episode does have a happy ending. Here comes father figure number three, Ned Flanders. To make things right, Homer apologizes and introduces Nelson to Flanders, who wants to mentor him. Ned sits down and says that he can relate to Nelson losing a father, as he knows the heartbreak of losing two wives. He offers to go to a baseball game with him, to which Nelson gleefully declares, Papa! Rod and Todd are excited to have, in Nelson's word, a mean foster brother. The episode ends with Nelson praying with the Flanders and blessing his new mentor. The bullies claim that Nelson has changed, but I'm not so sure about that. Nelson and Ned don't have much screen time together, but they do make the most out of it. Nelson clearly wants some stability in his life, and there is arguably no one more stable than this guy. At least most of the time. Ned Flanders and Nelson are among the most sympathetic characters in the show, with how much personal tragedy got thrown their way. There is something uplifting about bringing these two together to support each other. Plus, I think Rod and Todd both fall in the enthusiastic Martin category of funny character foils for Nelson. Similar to Mrs. Krabappel, Nelson would be a challenge to their goody-goody nature. Nelson hanging around the Flanders is a sitcom premise that writes itself. On the other hand, it would feel like the show is just throwing things at the wall in terms of what to do with Flanders. They go from the Leftorium, to Maud dying, to marrying Mrs. Krabappel, to getting a dog, to being Bart's teacher, to Nelson's father figure. I do think Flanders is a little rudderless these days, with all of his established storylines stripped away from him. I'm just skeptical this would be another gimmick, and it would make Nelson a less interesting bully. To be an effective character, Nelson has to keep his edge, and that might be difficult around the Flanders flock. If they're going to find a new father figure for Nelson, maybe it needs to be with someone with a similar edge. Finally, we have the most recent of Nelson's surrogate dads, Mo Sislak. In season 34's Top Goon, Mo is coaching youth hockey. He approaches Nelson to be the team's goon, to keep the opposing players from ganging up on their best score. Mo personally relates to Nelson, saying that no one gives scuzzes like them a second look. Mo, being a good coach, tells Nelson that he did amazing in his first game and enrolls him in the Top Goon training program. When they arrive, Mo playfully tussles Nelson's hair, the first time anyone has ever done so. Nelson learns at the academy how he has to protect Bart, who is his primary. During graduation, Nelson becomes depressed seeing all the happy families around him, but totally brightens up when Mo arrives to see him. As a graduation present, Mo even gets Nelson a ride in the Duff Blimp. Not bad for a couple of scuzzes, Nelson says. Later, Bart humiliates Mo with one of his prank phone calls, derisively calling Mo a scuzz. Nelson does not take this well. Goodbye Bart's arm, hello physical therapy. Mo, furious about this, yells at him and kicks him off the team. It's not until later, when talking to Nelson's mom, he finds out the reason. That Nelson's primary isn't Bart, it's Mo, and Nelson was trying to protect him from attacks. Mo tracks down Nelson working for Fat Tony, apologizes for not having his back, and tells him that he's a great kid and this isn't who Nelson is. In the end, Nelson asks if they can keep doing stuff together, and Mo agrees. This includes breaking King Toot's window and getting their trophy. I will admit that this recent episode is what inspired this video, because my god are Nelson and Moe a compelling duo. Earlier I had mentioned how Ned Flanders is so down on his luck, like Nelson, but Moe can take that a step further. 
Mo has always been rough around the edges and pushes others away from him. It's clear that Mo sees a lot of himself in Nelson, so he knows what going to his graduation would mean. In this episode, it's clear that Mo was being self-serving at first, just wanting a great player for his team. But Mo didn't have to do all this extra stuff for this kid. Mo's paternal streak definitely seems to be cropping up again in this story. However, as warm and fuzzy they are together, I would be shocked if we ever saw Mo and Nelson ever hanging out again. Mostly because Mo literally just did get a status quo change. He got engaged to Maya in season 33. As we all know, The Simpsons is fundamentally an episodic show that changes the status quo at a glacial speed. Potentially marrying Maya and then acting as Nelson's father figure would be a lot to throw at Mo at once. And The Simpsons just doesn't operate that way. It's not that kind of show. I'm not even sure if they remember they brought back Maya as of this video. As much as I enjoy their bond together and think about how charming that dynamic would be, the writers can't go around permanently solving every character's problems. There would be no show. So that's the creative conundrum. What should the show do with Nelson? They're clearly interested in the story concept since they keep revisiting it. Is this kid just permanently stuck in a bad situation, or should The Simpsons go somewhere with it? So when should a character trait on a TV show evolve into something new? That's Nelson's million dollar question. The Simpsons' episodic approach means they're not going to write story arcs on purpose. What they'll do is tug on character traits, and when something develops after a while, or things are getting stale, they'll make a change. Patty and Selma were both single, which resulted in Selma relationship stories and her eventual adoption of Ling. Then the writers got tired of remembering Ling exists. While Patty initially sidestepped this stuff, eventually came out and started getting dating stories. Or, in one of the most famous examples in the series, the writers got bored with Barney's alcoholism jokes and tried sobering him up for a while. Nelson's troubled home life is indeed one of those character traits that the writers have gotten a ton of mileage over the years. If they're not exploring Nelson's mysterious dad, they're dumping on his mom, making fun of her general promiscuity or her job as a stripper or working at Hooters. There's a legitimate argument that Mrs. Muntz was dealt an equally bad hand this lower-income mother figuring out how to raise her son on her own. But the show has almost never portrayed Mrs. Munt sympathetically. She's never had that spotlight about how hard it is for her. The show prefers pointing the finger at her, showing all her self-inflicted wounds. The point of view of The Simpsons is that Mrs. Munt is a giant train wreck who barely gives a shit about her son. Nelson literally made a movie called Life Blows Chunks to illustrate this. Nelson clearly cares about his mom, but it's not especially convincing that the feeling is mutual. As a result, it makes Nelson one of the most three-dimensional characters in the entire show, with how much his backstory informs his personality. We don't always like Nelson, but at the very least, we get him. We've seen his damage and can sympathize with him. As we all know, no one gets to choose their parents. And, unlike the adult characters, who've already gotten a chance to turn things around for themselves, Nelson got stuck in a status quo show like The Simpsons, where he gets to live in this reality for 30-something seasons. Gosh, imagine having a bad childhood and being stuck in it for 30 years. What kind of hell is that? I think that's why, after watching an episode like Top Goon or Better Off Ned, it's easy as a fan to latch onto those endings and wish the writers took it somewhere. Everyone loves a good found family story. Whenever they happen in a movie or a TV show, I totally eat that stuff up. It definitely seems like the writers have been chasing that feeling for the last few seasons. Honestly, I think that's a small part of why Nelson and Lisa are a popular ship. This quiet hope that maybe Nelson turns out alright. If it can't happen in the present timeline, maybe in the future. The Simpsons as a series is designed to comment on and satirize many parts of our society. And Nelson's present-day situation is representative of many people. The show uses him to shine a light on these issues. The series clearly isn't interested in exploring poverty with the Simpson family itself. Without the Munces, I guess all you have is the Spucklers. The problem with Barney going sober was that they didn't replace it with anything substantial. All they did was take something away. 
If the writers did find a way to stabilize Nelson's home life, whether it's Mrs. Muntz getting it together, or him being adopted or mentored or whatever, would it take something away from his character? With someone like Nelson, is the journey way more important than the destination? The empathetic part of me says, Please, writers, it's been 30 years. Maybe it's time to stop torturing Nelson. I feel bad enough for this kid. But the creative part of me says this conflict remains important to the series. They could do that episode about Nelson's mom, for example. It's really tough to tell if this narrative is totally played out by now. How many more Nelson's dad abandonment jokes can they possibly do? I mean, they went to Mars. I'd be curious where everyone else lands on this issue. I can see both sides of this one. Once again, like most Simpsons mysteries, the biggest bully in Springfield is the long-running nature of the series. Maybe they don't need to make a drastic change to the status quo. Maybe a relaxed and more upbeat approach to story selection would be better. If they wanted to do a couple more Nelson and Moe buddy cop adventures, I would totally be down. Have them solve a mystery together or something. I'm seeing double. Four Columbos! The situation with Nelson's dad has given the writers plenty of directions they could go with the character. Nelson's gonna keep looking for someone to grab a hold of. As for Nelson's dad himself, I think it's fitting how loosely defined he is in serious history, given his flaky and unreliable personality. This guy sucks. Why should we, the audience, give a crap about him? He can stay a Simpsons mystery as far as I'm concerned. I say, why not just embrace that fan theory and all collectively agree that Nelson's real biological father was Barney all along.